Once upon a time, there was a boy. He lived in a neighborhood that didn't exist. He lives in a house that no longer exists, on the edge of a field that no longer exists. He and his friends made up a thousand games where a stick could be a sword, a pebble could be a diamond, and a tree could be a castle. They collected the world in small handfuls where everything was discovered and everything was possible. That boy is you and I when we were kids. As kids, we had big, crazy dreams. That's why childhood was so incredible. There were no limitations or fear infused from past failure, disappointment, or hurt. Today, all of a sudden, as adults, our dreams are tailored to meet societal guidelines, fit parent approvals, and are limited by our own thoughts and make-believe capabilities. We've shrunken our dreams to fit boxes that we've made, or worse, that others have made for us. Remember the time when you learned to ride a bike and fell a few times, or maybe even scraped your knee a few times? That scraped knee or fall never stopped you from picking up the bike and riding again. You never questioned if you were capable to ride a bike, and all you did was try again and again and again until you rode into the sunset with all the other kids in the neighborhood. The barriers we created today that we so quickly accept did not exist in our youth and now prevent us from the success that we could be having. Recently, a study was conducted here in India regarding career options. And it revealed that nearly 93% of students aged between 14 to 21 were only aware of seven career options. Today, there are more than 250 different career options across 40 domains covering over 5,000 different job types. Though nearly three in five of these students were against traditional career choices, students in India today are forced by their parents and society to opt for conventional career options. Maybe engineering, civil services, law, and so on. I believe a trend like this in a country with students, with 50% students under the age of 27 is alarming. So the underlying question really here is, why are we as a nation so risk averse? One of the fundamental reasons contributing to this goes back to history. Being subjected to invasions over centuries, India has gone from one of being one of the richest countries in the world to one of the poorest countries. And when we didn't have sufficient resources, we had to opt and condition to deal with or make peace with the safest option. This mindset has been passed on from generation to generation. Today, we live in changing times. With globalization and the world in our palms, we have access to resources more than ever before. Our capacity to aspire and innovate has no limitation or boundaries. Innovation drives economic growth. Innovation means taking risks and letting go of fear. Fear of failure. Fear from past experiences. Fear from unrealized potential. In our minds, we've created a home where fear lives comfortably. It is time to change that. A few weeks ago, we conducted a small survey, and we asked a couple of students and adults to describe a horse and its capabilities. Over 90% of them agreed that horses are majestic, beautiful creatures to ever run on this planet. Take a look at this horse. It is not moving because it has been taught that when it's tethered to something, it is stuck. That conditioning has been so ingrained that it doesn't even try anymore, not even when it's tied to something as flimsy as a plastic chair. Just like this horse, how many times have we tied ourselves to a plastic chair of our own making and forgotten 
that we are actually a powerful horse beast that could gallop into the sunset if we only tried. As a child, when your father said no to something, you'd go and ask your mom, and there's a good chance you would get away with it as long as the two of them didn't speak. As children, we continued to ask again and again and again until we got what we wanted, but somehow as adults, we're told this is rude and childish. I believe society has this entire paradigm backwards. Though culturally, we are propagated to believe that our families and our society know what's best for us, we seldom exercise the power of independent thinking. We accept we are morally obligated to give up on our dreams instead of stopping and thinking for a second. We readily make peace with predefined norms. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a journalist. Watching people being interviewed really intrigued me. Most days, when I saw businessmen in suits, I wanted to be just like them. As time approached to enroll into college, I was told that these are unconventional career options and I should opt for something more mainstream that is more lucrative, like engineering or perhaps medicine. It was easier for me to naively follow this prescribed path rather than thinking for a second if that's what I really wanted. So I did go ahead and enroll into engineering. And sure enough, I didn't do very well. My grades were poor, and most of my fear was for me to pass my exams for my parents rather than doing so, uh, because it was my passion or dream to be an engineer. Post-engineering, I moved to Australia to further my education. It is here where I exercise the power of independent thinking to make everyday decisions both big and small. This enabled me to choose a course that I was interested in. This enabled me to pick a job that I like to work. And I was able to do all of this without constant validation or approval seeking. The power to independently think enabled me to to graduate, with a mas to graduate with masters with distinction, and it enabled me and empowered me to progress in my career. So when mo I moved from being an intern to a product manager of the Asia Pacific region in three years. Now most of us, in our early 20s, would be happy with, the with this kind of success acquired overseas. I was too, for the most part but I couldn't ignore the strong yearning I had to do something more. I wanted to start a company. I wanted to start a company here in India. However, I was scared. Most people I spoke to told me that and advised me otherwise, and some even called it reckless to go back and start from scratch without a plan. A by chance meeting with a successful woman entrepreneur in 2016 inspired me to take a leap of faith. Leaving behind the comfortable life I'd built in Australia, I moved to India to launch Space Basic in 2017. I didn't know what problem I'll be solving. I didn't know if I had the skill set or if I was capable to start a company, something that I've never done before. All I knew is I wanted to solve a real problem by starting a company that would add value to people's day-to-day -day life. Letting go of my fears and doubts, I returned and launched Space Basic in 2017. This by far has been the best decision I have ever made that I am most proud of. Every day we hear stories about people who redefine the quote, where there's a will, there's a way from a tea vendor to the prime minister of our country, from a poor farmer's son to the chief of our space research organization. Where there's a will, there is a way. The truth is, we might not all be able to achieve such spectrum of scale in our careers, but each and every one of us are most definitely capable of manifesting our dreams into reality by letting go of living comfortably in fear. In a country with the highest youth population in the world, our decisions will define the present and the future social and economic growth. So if there is a time, if there is such a thing as a right time, 
it is now. Thank you very much.